Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're out the range to talk about what I believe to be the best handgun on the US market. What well, by best, I mean great for concealed carry, everyday carry, reliability, parts availability, ergonomics, all of the above. And for a long time, the Glock was not only my carry gun, but I think most people would agree that it was the king of the hill for decades. But the question is, do I still think it's the king of the hill? We'll talk about that in today's video. If you guys would like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, the best way to do that is become part of our Patreon family. There is a link in the video description below. With that being said, let's kick off the video by shooting the MHS, MHS contract submission by Glock. No doubt about it, it's an acquired taste, but if you learn to master the Glock and how to shoot it with its kind of unique grip angle, it's a darn good shooting gun. I think most of you watching this video today will agree that the Glock 19 is probably one of the most popular carry guns on the US market, and for good reason. The guns are generally affordable, they're generally reliable, tons of aftermarket support. The only problem with the Glock really is its grip angle. Some folks don't like it, some folks don't like the trigger, but of course you can change that. But the gun is kind of stagnant. The gun hasn't changed much over the last three decades. Glock has become a one-trick pony. They got this gun, and as an example of that, it has back straps. Well, most people would say that are not Glock files, people that are like hardcore Glock addicts, uh, most people that pick this up will say it has a, a rather fat grip compared to competitive guns on the market. Well, Glock realized that the trend was towards replaceable back straps, and so Glock did a Me Too back strap where they just put a groove here, a pin, and you can just make a fat grip even fatter. It really doesn't improve the ergonomics, but I've seen some hardcore Glock guys that must be, you know, like Andre the Giant with hands bigger than mine that put the large back straps on it. Uh, I'd, I'd never liked it, or you think the grip's too big. But other than that, it kind of set the standard. It set the standard for the concealed carry market, and it won over a lot of police departments, the 17 or the 19s or the, the 22s. I mean, it's available in a wide variety of cartridges, pretty much everything that's out there on the market, but it's not my favorite anymore. I abandoned the Glock as a carry gun years ago, and if you go back to that old video, one of the things I discovered about the Glock 19 is with a thick winter glove on, I couldn't get my finger in the trigger guard without starting to press that trigger, and that started me thinking about a different carry gun, and that's been many years ago. So let's talk about the next gun in line because this isn't the king of the hill anymore, in my opinion. So what about the Beretta M9? It served our country well, at least in my opinion, as the M9 handgun, but the Beretta 92 has always been a gun I've liked ever since I was pretty much a young kid. A buddy of mine had an early 92 that we shot quite often in high school. Well, the guns evolved over the years, the M9, the M9A1, and this is an M9A3. They're currently up to the A4. The military, moved away from the Beretta. They had a number of reasons for doing it. They wanted a more modular handgun. Basically, if you want to know the, the requirements for the MHS program, you can Google it. But the Beretta didn't meet those requirements. Now, Beretta came up with the M9A3, hoping that the government would just adopt it and ditch the MHS trials, but they didn't. So the Beretta is no longer the US service pistol. But does that take away from the gun? No. Tons of aftermarket support. You have uh, LTT pistols out there, customized guns that are extremely nice carry guns. If you like double action, single action, a hammer fired guns, still one of my favorites. It's a really good gun. You can get them with different pistol grips. This has the straight grip. They have the M9 style with the hump. It's just a very neat, well-designed, smooth shooting handgun that um, I, I just absolutely love. Now, some military guys will say that mine was a piece of junk when I was deployed with it. Most of that is due to your armor or not due, due to any fault of the design itself, and it's also the fault of third-party manufacturers supplying substandard parts. The gun design itself is quite solid, but in my mind, it's not the top gun that we're talking about this afternoon. It's not the king of the hill. Let's move on to the next submission. A lot of folks ask me, how can I get involved in the firearms business in that particular community? And one of the best ways to do that is to become a gunsmith. Every gunsmith I know is just overbooked with work. It's a very good living. And so if you would like to become a gunsmith, you need to go to a gunsmithing school or become an apprentice for an existing gunsmith. But Modern Gun School is an accredited college that also works with veterans in the GI Bill, where you can go and get a degree from accredited college in gunsmithing and then go out and start your own gunsmithing business, which I think is a really great option. Again, throughout my entire life, gunsmiths have always been able to earn a really good living, assuming they have a really strong work ethic. So please check out Modern Gun School. I do have a link in the video description below. So 
Glock kind of set the pace for everybody in terms of polymer frame striker fired pistols, and Smith & Wesson is no different. They were following Glock's lead. So much so that the early pistols that were polymer frame striker fired were so similar, at least Glock claimed, to their own design that Smith & Wesson wound up being sued by Glock. But you fast forward to the M&P series of handguns, and we have two generations of those now, and this is a Gen 2 handgun. How does it stack up against the competition that we're talking about this afternoon? I place this handgun pretty low. I've never carried one. I've never liked the ergonomics. I don't like the stippling. I don't like the trigger. I don't like anything about the gun. It just is a, I don't know, Me Too striker gun. Now, I know there's a lot of people out there that absolutely adore it. Matter of fact, Jason, the cameraman, has a Gen 1 that he's tricked out and fixed most of the problems with that he likes, but even he doesn't like the 2.0 due to a lacking undercut, strange triggers, and just, I don't know, it's just something's off about it. And it's not something that I would ever personally carry. I've put Apex triggers in them. I've tried to love the gun. Ultimately, they just wind up sitting on the shelf until I do a video like today. So in terms of how it stacks up to the other guns we're talking about this afternoon, this one's gonna be probably the bottom of the stack. So I'm sorry if you guys love the M&P series of handguns. I just have no use for them. The next gun I wanna talk about is from SIG. Now the first stab at it that SIG took was the P250. The P250 is a polymer frame hammer fired pistol and it's a double action only handgun and when you watch me pull the trigger weapon is clear when you watch me pull the trigger you'll see the hammer come back fire and then when the gun cycles i have to release the trigger pull it again hammer comes back and fires so it was designed to be a carry gun i think they're probably targeting police like hk has the lem trigger a very light easy consistent smooth trigger pull one of the best double action only triggers I felt on a handgun, but it didn't take off. People were into striker fired guns, so this thing's been discontinued by SIG. It was dropped, and now you have to buy them on the used market. SIG moved on. SIG is notorious for this. They find something, if it doesn't work out for them, they ditch it, they stop supporting it, and they move on to the next greatest thing. The next greatest thing was the P320, which was a striker fired polymer frame pistol. Basically, they just took the double action hammer out of it, replaced it with a striker assembly and called it a new gun. Ergonomics, everything else remained the same. So the early P320s, I was turned off by them. I mean, I'm sure you guys remember watching the videos of people hitting them with hammers and making them fire or dropping them from a certain height onto concrete and the guns would fire. They were dangerous and had really bad triggers and I was completely turned off by the P320 in its early days. The US Army adopted the handgun. I'm holding an M17 right now. And along the way, SIG makes rolling changes to all of their designs. They don't incre increment the nomenclature. They don't call it an A1, A2, A3, A4. They just make sometimes pretty radical changes internally and just keep selling it as the same model. Well, the first shipment that the US Army took possession of wound up being problematic. And if you're one of the lucky few people that has one of the early M17s that were decommissioned and sold to the US public, you'll look inside the slide and you'll see machine cuts in there where SIG was trying to update the existing guns in the US Army's inventory. Army just said, take them back, SIG, give us new guns that have all the updates. So the current M17 is a well-rounded gun. Now it does have a manual safety on it, but the M17 or the P320 started to get my attention. The adoption of it by the US military really made me start taking a look at it because I'm a military small arms collector. Now that it's the US service pistol, I wanted to know more about it. So I started seeking out more information, which led me in a number of different directions because there's simply so many different models of the P320. So you probably get where this video is going by now. The P320 has really piqued my interest, so much so that it's become my standard carry gun or its smaller little brother, which is the P365XL. I'll carry them back and forth, the P365XL, for the most part being a miniaturized version of the P320. Polymer frame, striker fired, all that stuff. But let's talk about the full-size P320. It's an outstanding handgun. Now there's a number of different reasons for that. First of all, SIG has completely evolved the product line to where the triggers are outstanding. The early triggers were kind of meh. If you get one of the new flat face triggers, they're really nice triggers. Uh, they've gone through a couple of evolutionary changes to the slide cuts for red dot sights, but still mounting plates are abundant. But what's most unique about the P320 is its modularity. Now it's not the only modular gun on the market, but I would argue it's the most supported modular gun on the market. You have the third 
party market out there making parts and grip frames like Wilson Combat making grip frames for the guns, but SIG themselves have produced a wide variety of customization options. They have aluminum framed versions. This is the AXG. This really made me fall in love with the P320. This aluminum framed gun has a different grip angle, replaceable um, grip panels, where the polymer ones aren't replaceable. You just have to buy a different grip frame. Those are like 40 bucks and available at most every SIG dealership I've ever been in, but you can replace the back strap. So this gun shipped with basically redwood grips. I removed those, put G10 grips on them, and these are just commonly available from third party market on the internet. So the ergonomics is good. I like the weight of the aluminum frame and it's just a very, very good shooting gun. On top, I have a Delta Point Pro, and out here I have a broken TLR1 high, uh, HL sight. The door on it's broken, it still works, but that's a whole nother issue. So anyway, uh, this gun is what made me fall truly in love with the P320. So I started looking at the other products. SIG started up their custom works, and they started to produce guns like this new Spectre Comp P320, which has a comp that's on the end of the barrel, has their most recent slide cut for red dot sights, outstanding trigger, a new textured grip, and it uses the tungsten infused polymer, which I think is just a little bit heavier than the aluminum, but not quite as heavy as steel. Uh, that's without putting them on the scale, just how they feel in hand. So the aluminum is a little bit lighter. This puts a little bit more weight in the hand, but you have the, you know, very ergonomics and very ergonomic ambi controls on pretty much all the P320s, if not all of them. And the triggers have just really evolved into something that is really nice. I mean, when it breaks, it's kind of a rolling break, granted, but it's very smooth and the sights don't move. I can shoot this gun incredibly fast. So you have the option of really nice customized guns. This is straight out of the box from SIG's Custom Works, but they also have guns that use that tungsten lower <clears throat> and this is the P320 X carry. This has a threaded barrel on it. Their uh, second style, I believe, first or second style uh, slide cut. And this is a CHPWS mounting plate. And then this is the new P2 Acro that's on it. The reason that Acro is on it is because this is a gun I actually carry. Now, I'm talking about the full-size guns. They have compact grip modules. Again, if you buy a full-size grip and you want to go with a compact and 15 rounds versus 17, you can just go buy a $40 part and put a polymer lower on it. It takes seconds to strip the trigger out of this and put it in a different lower. So it's that modularity, ergonomics, outstanding triggers that are now coming out of SIG right from the factory that really makes this gun sing, in my opinion. So much so, just to make sure that they put the final nail in the I love it coffin, SIG introduced the X10. What's unique about the X10, if you watch our video, is that the X10, its grip is exactly the same size as a nine millimeter pistol, yet it holds 15 rounds of 10 millimeter in a flush fit magazine. This, in my opinion, is the best 10 millimeter currently on the market. The Romeo 2 sight that I have on here is probably one of the best red dot sights I've purchased. It has a very sharp, clear dot, much like the Trijicon HD. Uh, MRO site, but it doesn't have the artifact in, in the viewing screen. So yeah, and this is a, a polymer framed gun. So the modularity, the shootability, the customization options that are out there from not only SIG and off their website, but from the third party market, I really think that this is going to put a serious dent in Glock's market, at least here in the US. You're starting, because it's the US military service handgun, SIG's not gonna discontinue the line anytime soon. And I, I, I've said this before, I believe the SIG P320 magazines will become the new standard. Right now, you're looking at a factory 17 rounder and a factory 21 rounder, but third party market companies are already making P320 magazines. So you're gonna see magazines of various you know, capacities. So the gun has everything. It's cost, at least in the polymer frame versions, are you know very competitive with the M&P, the Beretta, the Glock, but you can certainly spend much more when you get into guns like this, which retail for like $1,600, $1,700. But, you know, so you go anywhere from that $500 all the way up to the $2,000 mark from SIG themselves, and then you have that third-party market out there if you want to do your own customizations to the guns or the grip modules. So in the end, the P320 has won me over. Now, what's interesting is I have two of the X carries out here. Jason, like me, a couple years ago, absolutely hated the P320. He wanted nothing to do with it. The X10 got Jason's attention. Jason like, was really impressed with the fact that it had a nine millimeter sized grip, 
but he really fell in love with my X carry, the gun I'm currently carrying. He really fell in love with the X carry so much so he has his own now. So Jason was a huge M&P fan, the 1.0 that he's customized and made, you know, custom to his hand and how he shoots. He's now looking at the P320 as a carry option himself. And that's saying something because Jason's really hard to push off that M&P. He loves the handgun, but I think he's starting to love the P320 more. I like to hear what you guys have to say about this. What do you think? I, I really think that the SIG is going to continue its growth in this market. Glock continuing to be a one trick pony, never really truly innovating. They're stuck on the same gun from 30 years ago. They're starting to lose market share, considerable market share to the competitors. I think the P320 is gonna wind up being its biggest competitor as we move forward in the US market. So comment down below, guys. Tell me what you think of the SIG P320. Uh, they just actually won a lawsuit uh, saying that they weren't guilty of having a defective gun. I don't know what that's all about, but Guns and Gadgets was talking about that. I saw that pop in my feed the other day. So comment down below. Let me know what you think about the P320. Where am I wrong and why am I wrong? I love reading those comments. We get video ideas many times from those comments. Again, if you'd like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, guys, the best way to do that is to become part of our Patreon family. And you can do that by following the link in the video description below. Also, right here on YouTube, you have that little join button underneath the video player you're watching right now. Mash that join button. You can support us right here on YouTube in the age of demonetization. Don't forget to swing by, check out Copper Custom. Thank you for 14 years of support, and we'll talk to you guys soon.